Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Battle Brothers with me, Cornice Knight, as we step back into this fantastic game. I love this game so much. This is going to be a Let's Play series for the Blazing Desert DLC, as you can see here. I was sent a review code by the developers. This film, this video is coming out on the 10th. The game is releasing on the 13th of this month, and I am really looking forward to it. As described in the description here, Blazing DLC Desert DLC adds a new desert region to the southern, with someone inspired by medieval Arabic, 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 and Persian cultures. A new late game crisis evolving holy war, retinue you of non-combat followers for your party, which is in, which is customized. Oh, sorry, uh, followers with which to customize your pot camp your company, alchemical contraptions and primitive firearms, new human and bestial opponents, and new contracts and events and more. And that is an understatement, folks. I actually even made a list for this. There's uh, a new land, new party retainers that they have said uh, arena matches where you fight in uh, Roman style gladiatorial events, new crises, and new, which is basically religious war, new opponents, like three distinct new opponents. You have the city states, you have nomads, and you have new bestial opponents. Um, three new origins, new banners, and a new, a new banner and gear, a new legendary location, a new boss fight. Uh, new battle map environments both for the DLC and for the standalone game so we'll have stuff like bandit camps tombstones if you're fighting in graveyards all kind of really cool stuff um, new contracts and events and I mean a lot and there's a lot more tweaking they've done in the events as well so a lot of the events are more reactionary to your decisions in game uh, new music and new achievements and oh there is so much I've been looking forward to this for so long let's dive right in Right, um, we have, if we just look at the three new achievement, three new origins, we have Southern Mercenaries. You and your small band of mercenaries have done dirty work for small time merchants for years, yet you barely a step above brigands. You want to be bigger than that, you want it all, and Gilda will reveal it to you the way. Gilder is the god. This is one of the things I wish Lord Sidorce mentioned that's not the, not covered in the description here or in my brief overview. Um, the world basically has a religious system now. You have the pantheon of the old gods, which is what the northerners believe in, and then you have the one one god, basically the one god of the southern kingdoms, which is Gilda, the god uh, the Gilda, which is basically the god of the, uh, basically the sun god. And um, the new event, which is a religious war, is basically fighting over holy shrines and sites um, linked to these di two different uh, religious systems. Um, so this is the Southern Mercenaries. By all accounts, it's very much like the new company start, but you start in the south. You have, where's the next one? You have gladiators. You fought in the arena of the south for years, first for your freedom, then for crowns, finally to become immortal. What else does fate have? in stock for you. Gladiators. Start with free experience. Gladiators with good equipment but very high daily wages. Legend, legends of the arena. Each gladiator has a unique trait in combat. Glorious free. You can never have more than 12 men in your roster and if you're free starting men should die, your champion, your campaign ends. Basically this is this is the alternative like lone wolf start where instead of having a lone knight you have free gladiators. Um, gladiators are a new uh, basically party member type you can pick up um, with some unique traits. You can also send people into the arena to fight and gain traits from being in the arena as well. They have very high um, expectations. They can't leave, but it, it's quite a challenging one by all accounts. Right, you've got uh, our good old Daf Cool cultists. Oh, I do love the Daf Cool cultists. Right, so... There should be one more. There's Northern Raiders. Okay, so we've got New Company, Peasant Militias, Poachers, Trade Caravan, Deserters, Northern Raiders, Manhunters. Here we go, Manhunters. That's what we were looking for. Um, constant conflict between city states and nomads makes a good business. You bulk your outfit are captives, forced to fight to earn their freedom, and their ranks grow after each battle. Army of captives start with two manhunters, each in and four indebted, which are basically you're basically playing uh, slavers. This is what it is. Um, it may have manhunters, but we're basically playing slavers. 
Um, four indebt indebted or basic slaves take up 16 men into battle at once, having equal or fewer, in in, well, fewer slaves and none indebted will make you men dissatisfied. All non-indebted can whip indebted in combat to reset their morale and buff their stats. Captives indebted earn 25% less experience and are capped at level 7 if they die they are struck if and, and will die if struck down so they won't get crippling injuries they just straight up die this is really interesting because basically this group this particular origin um basically has you have a very small group of elite party members surrounded by a lot of expendable party members and you basically get your elite party members leveled quite high and the rest of your party members are expendable a very interesting style I'm not going to play it straight away. We're going to play seven mercenaries, um, a quick start in the southern part of the world without any particular advantages or disadvantages. So this is basically your standard start for the southern kingdoms. Um, we can have a late game crisis. We can choose which one we want. There is, an, as always, you've got noble wars, green skin invasion, undeterred, or holy war. Um, will be a holy war between noble and southern countries. If you survive long enough, and following ones will be chosen at random. Um, we're going to have a look at the Holy War. I doubt we'll be able to actually play much of a much part in it early on. Um, because human conflicts in this game are brutal. Um, so we'll go... Let's, let's have... Let's call... Um, we always do Kurno in some regards. So... The Sands of Kurno, yeah. Sands of Kurno, and as always, as I said, this has been sent for me for review from the developers. So, uh, disclaimer: my opinions may be slightly affected by not having to pay for it. But I would have bought this anyway because I bought the last one myself. It is a lovely title. Um, right. There's a new banner. Let's see if we can find a new. Well, that's one of the new banners there. Very nice. Very sort of. Uh, Babylonian sort of Persian style uh, that's very Ara Arabian as is that one that's very Crusader Knights let's go with this we'll do the, sun, the, sun, the sands of Kurno and um, those look very cool indeed they do like the style they do lovely they do lovely banners in the game, but we'll go with this one because I like that style the sands of Kurno um, city towns and castles can be permanently destroyed during late game crises and have and have the world go down in flames in one of many ways you can lose a campaign. I won't turn that on just because I want to check out as much stuff as possible and I don't want to lose access to locations and places just because I screw up. So we'll have that, that on. Um, we'll have... Let's see. What do we want to do for economy? Um... We'll go. I'll, what I'll do is I'll start it all off at on the. Um, I'll go medium starting funds, but the rest will go with beginner, so we can check out as much content as possible. I will not put Iron Man on. Just I normally do, but I don't want to be affected by crashes or if my computer crashes and I lose content, which has happened to me in the past when recording this game. Um. So, I'll leave it off for now. Um, here's the seed if anybody wants to play it. And what's this unexplored map? An opt op optional way of playing the game where the map is entirely unexplored and not visible to you at the start of the game. You'll have to discover everything on your own, which makes your campaign more difficult but potentially also more exciting. That's cool. We'll do that. We'll have that turned on for another playthrough. Because being able to basically not being able to see the oh, that sounds cool. Um, Everything is good. This is good. I want to do starting hands because that's starting funds high because that's just excessive. I do medium. But let's start. Here we go, folks. Um, you could have stayed home, never left town, just lived out your days laboring for some vizier. Instead, you took up the sword, scrounged what little money the, money the guild had sawn upon you, and started a band of mercenaries. Life as a crownling has taken your place that most others never see. Have taken you places most others never see. In your sen in a sense, you carved open doors and avenues through violence. But the years have slowly weighed down the neck, your neck with nasty truth. You barely a step above a brigand. 
you get hired by locals to do simple things from simple pay, then sent on your way. You want the sand, you want the sands of Kurno to be the bigger than, than that. You want the company to, to, so, to sow, your company sown to the vizier's offices. You want to be wanted to gain the glory it deserves and maybe you wanted to even even travel north of two or four lands hell maybe in north they treat mercenary with respect of course it won't be easy you just have few men on hand but these men are jafar uh, are Jaf 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 malik for hound and asun the finest fighters you've ever known with them at your side the whole world shall come to know the sands of kerno the guild the guild will reveal us reveal us the way Okay, folks, first of all, let's check out our party members. We've got Jafar. Um, he's got a fire lance, a spear of design, and explosive charge that will spend, spread, spread fire over two tiles. When ignited, the charge is only used but once per battle and will automatically refill at the end of battle. That is very cool. Light armor. Uh, shield. Ooh, not too bad. We've got the Hound with a 200 mallet and some, a padded vest. And we've got a Sun with light armor, a composite bow, two bow range, maximum thing, range of six tiles. Mm, so it's s s shorter than some of the lot, like it's, it has less range than some of the crossbows. Hmm, that's interesting. We've got rice, ooh, and bandages. So he's got. Yeah, companion, cocky, eagle eye. Yeah, so he's a fairly solid archer. He's got loyal. Yeah, loyal's not bad. When I'm with you, the character's loyal to the end, and much less likely to leave you, even if you run out of crowns and provisions. Excellent. Um, and we've got this guy who is iron lunged and tough. Ooh, nice combinations. And we've got here, here's the ignition. Ignite the fuse of fire launch will unleash a stream of fire and smoke at your opponents. There's between 40 and 60 damage hit points, at which of which only 9 up to 9 on the ignores armor. Inflicts 36 to 54 damage to armor. Has a 40 has plus 40 percent chance to hit. Can hit up to, two, up to two targets in the line. Has one charge. That is very nice. Very nice indeed. Right. So let's quickly pull him here behind the back line along with him. Let's have a look at the world, Sowy folks. This is the I thought this was the Southern Kingdoms. I thought we were gonna have a new whole new continent. Okay. Hmm. I mean, the map is bigger than it used to be, I will admit you there. Um, and I thought we were going to have like a whole massive new continent. Hmm, interesting. They definitely expanded the map. Um, interesting. So here's the southern, con like the southern area of the world. There's one faction, but the, well, as I say facts and they're city states more than anything else. So let's open up our tab for relations. You have the city of Quadim, a wealthy and independent city state focused mostly on trade and acquiring further wealth. You have the realm of Hakim al Ramal, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom for conquest and for of fortune, wisdom the conquest of fortune. A city-state dedicated to acquiring knowledge above all, even if it comes at the cost of doing autopsies, reading forbidden tombs, or engaging with sinister powers, not of this world. Fascinating. And you have the realm of Hekma. Hekma? Hekma, or by all means, a city-state ruled by Rufus Council of Batis out to achieve power by all means. Many an altar untimely death is rumored to have been an assassination ordered by the viziers of Hik Hikma. Okay. So... Yeah, those are the city states. They're pretty far away from us. Here's the desert. Right here, we have 2,400 gold, 50 food, standard setup. We're on the Lus Oasis coastline. Hmm, interesting. I will, first thing I will say, I was expecting basically a whole new continent like this to be at the bottom. 
Um, I will not lie. Let us get moving. Oh, they've got a new enter the city icon. That's nice. Yep, let's speed up. Yeah, you obviously travel a lot slower in the desert. Right, a large and rich city state that thrives on trade oh, on at the edge of the desert. Right here. So, new contract signs. Very nice. Let's check out uh, what weapons lurk within. We've got a scythe. Oh, sorry. Sa um, self, self. A curved sword found only in the southern reaches. So, basically, like a scimitar. Well, there's a scimitar right there. So, what's the difference? One handed. Uh, so basically, it's it's the it's the earlier version of a scimitar. Good to know. Um, light southern mace, very nice. Two-handed saif. Ooh, that looks very nice. Saif, 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 saif. Large version of saif, wielded with both hands. Very nice. Uh, pole mace, very nice. I think that's already in the game. Well, no, I, I think, I'm pretty sure that's the new version of it. Um, looks all very fascinating. We've got an alchemist. What's this? Potions. Um, right click to drag character selection in order to drink. This item will be consumed in the process. Possible recovery per turn. Fatigue fighter to dead fighter. I doubt these are permanent things. Overindulging may lead to sickness. That's cool. We have smoke pots, fire pots, acid flasks from the first game. We have fire lances here. Hand gun. Hand gun. A long iron barrel with a long wooden handle. It fires shrapnel in a cone and can hit multiple targets in one sort. Can only be used while engaged in melee. This is really cool, guys. Um, it cannot be used while engaged in melee. This is basically hand gun. Hand gun. Um, are basically the precursors to the Argobus. Um The they're basically the first real. They're the first real sort of black powder weapons. They are very very cool. Um, bag of powder. Black powder contains powders for five uses. Very interesting. So if you buy this, we're going to have to be constantly resupplying the powder. Um, flash pots. So it's basically days. It's basically like a dazed grenade. You've got smoke grenade, cover four tiles and smoke for one round, allowing anyone inside to move freely and ignore zones control. That's very powerful. Fire pots. It says seven. So these this all looks really cool. So that's the alchemist. We have the arena, which we can do arena fights in if we wanted to. Let's have a look at that. Um, dozens of men mingle with some of the arena entrances, some stand stoically, not wishing to give any hint of, capacity, of their capabilities. Others, however, boast and brag, either sin sincerely confident in their master skill or hoping their bravado mask any holes in their game. A grizzled man, the master of arena, holds up a scroll and taps it with a hook hand. That is not a, f a fig tree, it's a spider. The alchemists bless their le learned hearts, call them Weapon X, which is easily um, call them Wep Next, which is silly, a silly northern name. In truth, it's their spiders. Unfortunately for you, a boot will not be sufficient to this time around for two of them. The, the points of some strange... The points to some... Sorry. Um, unfortunately for you, a boot will not be sufficient this time around for the two of them. The points to some strange looking collars and containers. I think it's supposed to be he points to some strange collars and containers. There may be some like spelling mistakes and stuff, folks. Um, but uh, if you notice any, point them out to me. I'm sure the developers would be very happy to correctify. Um, when you're ready, put these on on the three men who will be fighting there. I wait for the next fight. Uh, I'm not going to do the arena fights yet. Um, we have the marketplace. Let's see, if we can find the marketplace. Um, some bits and pieces, some armors, which look very nice. Oh, cool. Um, basically, um, this is Lin this is basically very much like what um, Roman, like sorry, ho Greek hoplites and stuff used to wear. Uh, Lithorax. Basically, it's um, several layers of linen. Like this is very much in the Greek style, which is I, I'm a big fan of that period. 
Right, padded vestments. Um, spiked skull cap with mail. Lots of armor, though. That's very nice. Okay. So what is he armed with? He's got... 60. He's got 50. Okay. I will grab that. Also, are they wearing helmets? No, they've just got cloth wraps, which is only 30, which is not great. Um... That's a lot of money, right off the bat. Rightio. Well, first things first. His stamina looks okay. So we can give him some better quality armor. He can have that. Okay. I'm a bit rusty, folks. It's been a while since I last played this. Right, so we've got disappearing villagers which are either beast brigands or some other thing. And we've got Amber's Trade Caravan, so it's more expensive. All right. So we've got Indentured. Indentured are cast of de facto slaves. Um, sorry. In the city state, and such are not hired, but brought and, reser and reserved no daily wages. Sorry, but brought, bought and received no daily wages. So if we don't, if we don't want to pay people money, we can do that. But they're not going to have great stats. And of course, folks, they are going to be capped at level 7. Remember that. They will not go above level 7. Uh, we could have... A day teller. Um, you can physical work, but don't excel at any. Okay. So we can get a couple of people. Right now, considering our financial options. Uh, let's try out this guy. He's got weasel, melee defense... And he's faint-hearted. That's not so bad. But melee defense while we're tr uh, while we're treating, yeah, not great. Um, but I'm lacking in, in options, so I will grab him, and I will. What's he like? Team player. Fear of beasts. Fighting beasts. That's not great. Yeah. None of these are great. Irrational and he's fragile. Versus Beast isn't great either. None of these look great. So I'm not going to take any of them right now. Um, yeah. Well. I'll take him. But we'll probably have to like sacrifice him at some point. After all, yeah, he's got good melee. He's average melee. Got. Let's see where their stats go. Um, he's got decent range defense. He's got these. He's got good way of increasing his fatigue, and he's got good initiative turn order. This guy has great melee potential. Yeah. This is a uh, no more checks triggered for non combat allies upon dying. will always content to being in reserve, and they don't go above level seven. Okay. Um, got great. He's got great um, melee skill, good stamina development, and he can get range defense, which is nice. So let's give him him the stat to start off with. Um, with what money we have left, we've got to go to the market. How is the food situation? Everything here is more expensive due to basically the attacks, which is not great. But I do need to give equipment to people, unfortunately. So we can grab. We'll grab that. Um, they only got one shield, unfortunately. We'll grab a small shield. Uh, we'll grab that and we'll grab this and then we'll need to go and do work straight away um, he's got good melee attack so he can have that he can go in the back and with this 
he can have that and this and we'll put him in the front how is this melee defense this would be should be good something like this we need some work now because we are low on money contracts so we're here Iban Tabor the Grand Vizier is is partly sitting on a throne of silk cushions and partly on the bodies of harem of attractive women he puts his hand up if you step further crowning then you will grow in sight by diminishing in view understand um grow in sight by diminishing in view okay um Understand, a smart man knows his place. I have a simple task for you, sword hand. No man's aside of Quindem have taken to thievery and fuckery. For a handsome hand, for a handsome hand cell, I need you to annihilate these men who made my life uncomfortable. Let's talk payment. So, so payment. You will need. Free, you will get three hundred seventy crowns when the contract is done. We need to be paid. One second, folks. So about that, folks. Right. So payment, you get 370, 370 crowns when the coin is done. We need to be paid more for this. So, so I understand. 380 crowns, accept the offer. Right, drive off the nomads at the hideout. Yes, I tend to think. What's this one? Gazi, Ibn, Tabir, Master, Astrology. It's standing over a map so enormous that it cannot fit on the table. But instead of parcels, instead of parceled out and spread across multiple floors, but instead it's parceled out and spread across floors, it seems unnecessary as the map could easily contain the proper, proper resolution. But you keep your observations to yourself. Vizier walks over the paper and points to a location. Beasts have set up, for a pop, have set up this part of the realm and are seeing to its destruction in a manner that I have not agreed to. I have more important matters to attend to. Uh, matters to attend to there. He points to another area of the map, which includes just, which um, and he points to another area of the map, which just looks like a bunch of empty desert. He continues, so I need a, a man such as yourself, Crowling, to see these roaming monsters, particularly to your success. You'd be rewarded 470 crowns, which would be more than suitable. This is my kind of work. Be paid more. No, I have to press the F1. Uh, we need some time to think about this. So, we have two options. We have the beast extermination and we have bandit, basically. That's what the nomads are. The nomads are basically the bandits of this region. Um, or at least they are the predominant bandit facts in this region. Let's take the bandit one. Um, we have enough food to last us for four days can't we could buy yeah we'll buy a little bit more food which takes us up to seven days and that's all of our money spent and where are we going we are going out into the middle of the desert okay wish us luck folks the first battle of the game god our speed is really slow over sand Um, I do love this new art, this new art look. Not going to lie, I was hoping for like a whole massive continent like this, but this isn't bad. Maybe they'll expand it a bit more. Rightio. So it's afternoon. Unknown location in the desert. Let's go. Some nomadic cutthroats. Right, and look at this, folks. We have like sleeping bag. Well, we have like chairs, sleeping arrangements, things that um blocks movements, supplies, all new art styles. These are all melee troops. This is gonna be fun. Okay. Can't do anything this turn, so we're going to wait. Out they come. Do we want to start pummeling this guy? Take us 2 AP to get there. Hmm. What I would like to do is try and block them. Blocking movement, yeah. 
Um, so we could stick him. What we could do is we could send him here. If someone light stacks up, we could then hit them with a fire lance. That could be cool. Let's see what we get. Yeah, that's that looks like a nice idea. Um, going to delay. Going to delay. You're gonna basically move here. And we basically hit them with that, which is really nice. They're wounded, burnt his leg badly. Excellent. He's done. Okay, so he's pushing up this way. He's pushing up this way, and he's pushing up that way. Okay. Um, this guy's got to have a lot of defense, but we can try. Yeah, the arrow sort of flies out and like rips his ear open. He blocks with the shield. Um, let's get here. Oh, I thought I had more movement than that. Okay. Move here. Gash. Well placed slash. So what's the difference? Has 33 chance of lowering threshold to inflict injury. We do that. That's a 48-6% chance to hit. This is a 46% chance to hit. Okay, let's try this then. Ooh, really cut him up. Move here. And we can do... Morale penalties. Nasty hit. He's dazed. Don't like the looks of that. Um, got him in the soda. Oh, they're coming from my archer. He's dazed. So damage and initiative turn order. But he smacked him in the head. These two are fleeing, which are fantastic. He can't do anything. Does he have a dagger? Yeah, we'll rip his dagger out. And... Stab him. We'll repel him with this. Uh, he dodged. And that's not great. Kill him. Come on, stab him. You can do it. No. Um, you get there, and we'll do shield knock to knock you away from him and then get you in the combat. You can come here. Stab his face. Oh, he's got a he's disengaged. We're gonna run them down for the extra experience. Stab him. Stab him, I say. Beat his head in with a hammer. Quickly cover the distance. And there we go. Took a little bit of damage. What did we get? Um, some sahifs, which are very nice. Some sealed and a little bit of the supplies. Excellent. And we took out the encampments. Excellent. Let's run back to the city. Yeah, we move really slow across this desert. I wonder if we eat more supplies because we're going across the desert. Because obviously you have to, like... You don't have fresh water sources or anything. That's going to be nice. Actually, this is the retinue section we can also do, I sort of mentioned. Manage your retinue for non-combat followers. Unlocks the different renowned levels, apparently. Company lacks the renown necessary to hire more non-combat followers. Okay. So it's all based on our renown. I know there's some really interesting ones. Followers are nice because it um, allows you to ha basically... It helps you with a whole host of things. A servant hands you over to meeting with the Grand Vizier. He hands you a scroll as well as a satchel. Despite having already handed you the paper, the servant puts his his hands behind his back and looks at the ceiling as he recites. The crown ling is awarded 330 crowns as per the arrangement. Having taken his reward, he is dismissed from the property post haste. The servant looks down at you and nods. Leave. You leave. Oh, he says. So we get that. Excellent. Um, so. That's nice. 
more the same kind of shield. Is there anybody here that's different? No. Um, we could buy another slave, I suppose. Um, nomad. Can't afford that price. I will grab another one. How goes the food situation? I will hire another one. Is he any good? He's okay. Um, but the thing is, I literally just need bodies and uniform, really. They don't need to be good. They just need to be able to fight. So we can earn money. And I suppose that's the whole role of them, isn't it? Because they're, they're level capped at 7. They won't break morale of my non-members. Like my, my non-indented servants. Um, so I suppose that's how you use them, really. Unfortunately so. Here. So, yeah. Okay. So we've got two indented servants and four normal people. Okay. I will take the... Accept the contract for the beast extermination. Um, which will clear that out. Can't afford anything here, really. Right. And this is relative. I'm going to put a cut in here, folks. I am happy with how it's going so far. Right, where's the beast extermination? Hunt down the beast, terrorizing the region. Okay. Um, it looks like so far I'm really enjoying the, the DLC. I had hoped that it was going to be a bit bigger. Um, maybe have its own, like, basically same size continent as what we normally used to. Um... But maybe that was a slightly wistful thinking on my part. Um, but it does look it does look really interesting so far, and we'll see how much this content has. I've been Cornus Knight. This has been the Blazing Deserts DLC for um, Battle Brothers. You're going to be getting one episode of this every single day for the foreseeable future. And I shall see you all again next time. Goodbye, folks.